and they're supposed to pay off some of your loans and give remainder of funds if they are left lungi um remainder of funds remember it's still not your money um i always advise my clients don't take the remainder of funds because that remainder yes it's possible that all your loans um maybe the balance is hundred and fifty thousand. then maybe you qualify a con for a consolidation loan of two hundred thousand. so what happens is that they will definitely give you the whole two hundred thousand. but remember that fifty thousand change is actually not your money it's still part of the loan so i would rather take the 150 and pay only for the 150 and take the take that fifty thousand and say the bank i don't want you fifty thousand because it sounds like it's your money but in actual fact it's another loan that you're taking on top of the consolidation loan even if it's in one umbrella so please don't if really you want to finish your debt and you don't want more debt don't take extra take what is equivalent to your to your bank to your to the balance of all your loans whatever extra don't take because it's not your money it looks like it's your money because they're going to give you it's going to be in terms of cash but it's actually a loan so don't take it especially if you don't need it um okay i do have a credit but not able to see my credit score so it's affecting me a lot as someone please contact me on the um, on my link let's see what we can do um uh, someone was saying i'm paying my account very well but i'm struggling to get finance for a vi call okay someone yeah contact me then we'll talk I, I did just that and for all the months i did that it shows on my record as missed payment um kuturi well remember it's not gonna update the the first month so when you save all the months how many months was it was it years was it two years because a credit report can take six months to be updated so you might find that it was updated the missed payments it was before you did the arrangement you know so you must also look into that how do i take out a debt review out of my name um day day please con con uh, co consult your debt counselor you need to cancel it with her i know there is a process you need to go to the court they need to take you out of debt counseling and yeah and then they're going to give you a a, a a cancellation certificate which you need to send to all your creditors so get the information from your get uh, from your debt counselor because you also need to cancel the agreement that both of you had and then they, there's a deed that you need to get from the court so debt review is a legal thing because it it's more like when a company says i am under um, I cannot pay my debts. Um, I'm under. I'm insolvent and all those things. So it's it's you telling the creditors that guys, I'm currently not capable to um to handle my finances in terms of credit. So I got somebody to do it on my behalf. So don't ever bother me. Don't ever give me more credit. I am I am um disabled. I'm trying to put it in a way uh, that is gonna make sense in a simple term. You know, like I'm disabled when it comes to credit. So, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm in cancelling right now. That's why we call it debt cancelling. So you need to talk to your debt counselor. Um, can I still buy a property if I fix my credit even after put under a bed? Yes, that is a nice thing, um, my major. The difference between being blacklisted and this new act um, is that you can... It gives you room to fix your problems and you can still be able to qualify. So you fix your credit, your credit with your creditor and then they take you out as a bad payer. You wait some few months um, and then you can go and apply. The only difference is that a lot of people, they want to fix it one month. They go and apply one month. It does not work like that. It's a, it, it takes time. Remember, it did not take you only one day to to mess up your credit score. It took you months and months and years and years. So we must not expect it to take us only one month to fix it but definitely after you have fixed everything you are they will definitely take you out as a bad payer when you're up to date and everything is going well and then your credit score will start going up one of my clients um i've been with her for three months her credit score went up with four right now in this month now when we checked so it it does go up because we dealt with the handed over account we made arrangement now she's no longer a bad payer she's paying her things uh correctly so I think my chair is making noise <laughs> and I can't talk without moving here. Eh? I cannot talk without moving. <laughs> Minister of Joy saying thank you so much. Uh, Rage, they listed me as a bed payer and I have already paid the account and closed the dating. You are allowed to send your paid up letter and um, yeah, you paid up letter to the credit bureau. There is an email. I just don't know it from here, but there is an email that you can email and then tell them that I've paid up this account, but it's still showing under my my ITC. Can you can it please be removed? 
uh, because remember guys the creditor if the creditor does not go and remove you while you also have the proof you can still do it um, on your own you don't have to wait for them because definitely it's it's possible because it does not happen automatically it's possible that they did not go and update and say no this person has paid us now can you please remove him remove it or remove him from um being a bad payer so you are allowed to take that's why each and every time when you finish paying up a, a, a loan make sure you get a paid up letter that is going to help you to also send it to the credit bureau, the ITC, and then just um, tell them that I've paid it, I paid up, but it's still affecting me, and then they'll take it out as long as you have the proof. Uh, okay, why is it bad to apply for payday loan even if you make sure they're always paid on time? Cleo, so uh, paid up loans, number one, they are the best, they are, they are the bad thing that can ever happen to credit score so paid up loans that don't work like a normal uh, loan so with a normal loan each every every month it updates with a with a paid up loan it does not update each and every month so you might find that you have a paid up loan that it's updated it's it says um three months but you've already paid it up because a credit score as well does not update each and every month so with every payment that you make if you are on if you're on track with your credit score on the loan itself it updates each and every month that's how a, a no, it's not a long-term loan but a loan is but the 30-day loans you pay but then it's not updated you need to wait for two or three months for that thing to be updated you go and you take another payday because on the on the bank system it is updated that you have paid they can give you another one but on the credit score um on the credit bureau it's not updated because it's not like a normal loan it's a it's it's I don't know if it has its own category that it falls under, but it does not work like a normal loan. So it means that in three months, because what happens with the paid with the payday loans, remember you pay it in full. So which means in your salary, you always have a three thousand short if you always take three thousand. So each and every month you'll keep on taking those loans while on the credit score they're not updating because it takes longer to update. Now on the credit score, you you on your credit report you now have three loans, but two of them you have paid for the last uh, two months. Now you have the third one. Now you want to go and you apply for something. When they check on your credit report, they see three loans, but the two are, are, are paid up. But because the credit um, score does not update each and every month, it's not updated, so it's gonna affect you. Now you look like somebody who have three loans because they don't get closed immediately. So that is the disadvantage of a pay payday loans or 30 day loans or short term loans like we call them that is the difference um i have okay i have a problem as i said before i need to talk to you i'm no longer paying my bills all of them uh okay yeah please talk to me it's stressing me a lot talk to me i will help you we'll see what we can do we'll see what we can do talk to me we'll no no we'll say to um but they use the same criteria as you're applying for a new loan for example the decline lungi are you talking about short-term loans i think lungi was talking about short-term loans she's the one who asked about the loans right uh okay no okay i don't know lungi what are you talking about here um what declines oh you mean the debt consolidation yes for affordability but it's debt consolidation yes but it's a loan it's, it's a loan you're taking to consolidate your debt. So they will use the same criteria. I did explain that. They do check your affordability. If can you take, remember, thank you so much for the rose. So remember with the credit, with the credit, any credit you take, it has to go to the credit score. And a, a debt consolidation, it is a loan that you pay, you, you, you consolidate all your loans. That's why the name loan is there. They didn't even try and hide it and call it a debt consolidation plan. So it's a loan you take because you don't have money and the the the, the, the installments that you're paying are now too much for you. So instead of you getting another loan on its own to go and pay for everything which is gonna be um which is gonna be paid up to you to is gonna be paid to you because with debt consolidation loan the other nice thing is that automatically they go and pay all those loans for you unlike a personal loan that thank you so much i am guys i cannot see from far i think it's i am something and it went away thank you for the roses so they what they do they go and pay them they make sure they pay that loan 
even on your contract on a debt consolidation loan ne? there is a loan thank you so much matthew there is a, a, a they do specify that we are giving you this loan in the, the um because we are going to pay one the state all the accounts that are going to pay you don't go and pay them they go and pay so that you even select them because I, I i worked in a bank i used to give clients cons debt consolidation so i know how it works from the system side you select the loans they will let you know if there's one loan that you do not they don't it, the debt consolidation cannot pay so the difference is that with a personal loan they give it to you cash few of you are going to go in and consolidate and the reason why they cannot give you cash it's because that you don't even qualify for another new personal loan apart because of the loans that you have so the debt consolidation loan you only qualify if they are definitely going to pay other loans and help you to pay for those loans i hope i'm making sense to you um who's that uh lungi so it is a loan that's why a lot of maybe a lot of people thought it's gonna be a plan it is a loan unlike a debt um cancelling that you don't it's not a loan you go to a counselor who's gonna help you reduce your installments and all that but with debt consolidation it is a loan and it will it will also um um the process of getting the loan will be the same as any other loan all right um thanks and again the affordability will play a part because the, the bank will need the money back if you cannot pay that installment so it means that you cannot afford to get a debt consolidation and it will definitely decline if the debt consolidation is saying that you need to be paying seven thousand rand and then um they check and they see that the affordability does not allow you they are not going to to give you and i'm glad that you spoke about uh the debt sorry some messages came back i'm glad that you spoke about um affordability because that's one of the things i wanted to highlight that guys just because your credit score is good and you you can't just go and say i need a million rand or i need two million rand and you don't afford to pay back that million rand so for the credit score it's part of it's not the only requirement for you to get a credit it's part of so you still need to afford uh, to have affordability of disposable income after paying all your expenses do you have money left for you to finance this new credit that you're getting thank you so much matthew thank you so much so it's not only the credit score a lot of people think because they have a credit score that is good they're just gonna go and say okay i want to buy a bentley it's about three million you better give me a loan because i have a good credit score well your salary does not even allow you to pay for that amount each and every month so affordability plays a huge role as well so don't think credit score is the only thing affordability and credit score they go hand in hand they are part of the process of you getting a credit the credit score helps you to get a better interest rate and also to get the credit as well because if your credit score is bad you might not get a credit as well so they both work hand in hand and if you also can afford even if your credit score is good you cannot get the credit because the bank won't get them the installments back because you don't qualify you don't afford to take any other responsibility that you need to be paying each and every month okay now we can continue um thanks please explain debt review so debt review i think i did explain in, in a summary it's like debt cancelling it's when you are over debted and now you cannot pay all your creditors you go and you say guys i cannot take care of my credits I've appointed somebody to do this for me. This person is my counselor. She's going to help me because I'm overdebted. I need to go to counseling. As much as we go to counseling for mental health, which means for your debt health, you need to go to counseling. It means that you're not capable to take care of your own credit. So what happens is that the debt counselor will go and let all your creditors know. And your, your debt counselor will also go and... Um, get a court order which is a legal thing that she's going to use to say guys this is legal this person has even went to court to declare that i cannot take care of my finances in terms of credit so please don't bother me don't talk to me anymore i don't uh, i can't even answer anything anymore so if you want to talk to me regarding anything that has to do with finances this is the counselor that is helping me initially what was supposed to happen is that you need to be counseled to say that or counseled i don't know how you're going to pronounce it pronunciation they so that person you need to have sessions with your counselor to help you not to go over debted again 
But one thing I've realized with South African, I don't know other countries, I'm just going to speak with South African counselor, debt counselors. They just help you to pay the debt. They don't help you to get out of the debt. They don't get to a point where they ask you, how did you get into debt in the first place? So a lot of people that go under debt review, after five years, they'll go back again. Because to them, it's a way out of saying, okay, I can still owe and pay less. And then somebody will come and negotiate for me. And then I can stay for five five years without getting credit. They fix all they fix my credit history, then I can go back again. So it is supposed to be like a rehabilitation center where they help you to not go back and be indebted again or over debted again. They need to sit down and counsel you to say, why did you get into debt? This is some things that you're not supposed to do in future. But I think it's not doing its job. That's how I feel. It's not doing its job. Hi, Sissy. Can you please explain how does credit card work? Oh, Linde, Linde. I think it's Linde. If you are vendor, I, yeah. So, Linde. Um. So, how it works is that a credit card. It's two in one. It's a transactional account plus credit in it. So that is the tool that it was built for you to help you have a credit history and a credit. Um, to build your credit score. So there are two types of credit cards. There's one you get from the bank where you also get it in a, in a, in a sense that you can also withdraw money from it. And there's a credit card that you get from a clothing account where you can only buy anything that has to do with that shop or the group itself. So you cannot go and withdraw and get money. So the best uh, credit card that I would really advise you to get if um, I don't like using advice because this is not advising. I will recommend or, or it's good for you to use when it comes to building your credit score it, or a credit profile. It's the bank credit card because you can use it as a transactional account. The one from this credit score, credit, uh, you're sorry, the one from the shops, you cannot really use it as a transactional account. So with the credit card, it works like this. They're going to give you money. They're going to give you like, let's say 5,000 Rand, you qualify for a 5,000 Rand credit card. Each and every month, they're going to take a minimum Pay, uh, you're, you're going to pay a minimum installment of 5% of the money you have used. Unlike a loan where you take 100000 you pay the fixed amount um, for the rest of the five years, even when your balance is going down. So with the credit card, you only pay for what you've used. So whatever that you have not used, you don't pay installment on that. And the other nice thing, and I also had apparently African Bank has a 60, over 60 days interest-free interest-free um, uh, when it comes to a credit card but I know a lot of banks it's 55 interest-free so it means that if you take a credit card you use money and then you pay that money back in 55 days it means that you're not going to be paying for interest so basically you're just using the bank's money and not paying interest on it the only thing that you're going to be paying it's going to be savings fee like I said that each and every credit has a savings fee and I think with a credit card it's like 45 rand 50 rand each and every month so what do you then do if you don't want to use the bank's money? There is your 10,000 is there. Maybe you're putting it there in case um, I need money or because I'm trying to build my credit report in my credit um, profile. I just need it to help me there. But you can take the money you use for your groceries. You can take the money that you use to anything that you swipe with your card. You can actually put it inside your credit card and use your own money instead of um, the credit card money that you've been given by the bank. That's where the transactional part of the credit card is, you know. Okay, so if you don't want to use the bank's money, that's what you're going to do. You're going to use your own money. The utilization will still count. So the more money you have there, it, you will find out if you do you, you do check this credit utilization thing, ne? Yo, you do check your credit score. You will find out that if you put more money, it's going to write that your balance is over 100%, which works on your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your behalf because it means that this person does not live on credit. She or he actually has her own money to, to, to spend instead of spending the money that the bank gave, gave them. So, yeah, that's how a credit card works. So, I hope I did answer you uh da, 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 um linde, ne? and then user nine user two one nine four says which which bank does consolidation every bank does i'm not sure about capitec but the big big bank banks like net bank fnb apsa standard bank which other bank i'm not sure about invest tech maybe does um yeah 
but yeah those banks most banks they do debt consolidation loan don't forget it's a loan guys it's a loan is there any type of debt that cannot be prescribed uh yes definitely your home loan can't be prescribed you cannot prescribe your home loan and you cannot prescribe your only unsecured debt can be prescribed you cannot prescribe your your car finance you cannot do that so yeah those are the loans that you cannot prescribe do they include home loans in consolidation um no okay no in terms that remember a uh, debt consolidation is a personal loan and there's an amount that is limited when it comes to personal loan so you might find that your home loan is like 1 million rent they cannot give you a personal loan amount into 1 million rent so no they cannot consolidate um home loan because home loan number one it's uh it's a secured uh debt so you cannot consolidate any secured debt hello good afternoon thanks for helping and changing lives i celebrate you much love ah uh, thank you I am. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. That was so sweet. Thank you so much. Hi, does negotiating with bank to decrease my installment affect my credit score? Sikumba, um, there is somebody who did really say that it goes and be listed as a as a bad as a bad payer, which I disagree. Uh, because if you make an arrangement, they're not gonna go and list you as a debt payer. Remember, whatever credit score, whatever credit report has, it's what the bank is telling them your credit is telling them if you have made an arrangement the only thing that is going to be affected is the fact that you're gonna it's gonna take longer for your credit to um to be finished because or to to be settled because now the amount of money that is there it's not gonna accommodate your principal debt and the interest as well so if you're doing it before they've handed you over it's not gonna affect your credit score but if you're doing it after they've handed you over um, it's the, your your credit score will be affected by them handing you over and already um already um telling not reporting you as a bad payer. So it depends when do you start after they vended you over or before when you see that oh my goodness my things are not going the same way they used to. I think I must call the bank and make that arrangement. Um, can you fix a credit score while the accounts have been handed over? No, Lindo. Okay, yes. Yes, you can. So what happens that if any account is handed over, you need to make an arrangement with the lawyers that they've handed over that account. And then you start paying that. They start um, updating your balance to see that you, you, you get out of the missed payment. Remember when you're handed over, each and every month or each and every time your credit uh, report is updated, you are currently being listed as somebody who's, who has missed payment. When you start making an arrangement with the lawyer, Oh, yeah, the company that they handed you over to, which means your missed payment start being lesser and lesser and lesser. And it means that, okay, now your score starts growing. Yes, it might not grow with uh, five or six or seven points, but that one point is a lot when it comes to credit score. So as you are paying your creditors, the, 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 the score is going to go up and up. So it means that by you paying a handed over account, you also helping, you also uh, working on your credit score as well. Hi Kay, hi Lindo, how are you? I'm a pensioner who is a who is on debt review. What can I do? Ooh, so too. Were you a pensioner who was working? I'm trying to understand why would you go under debt review if you got a payout that you could pay your debt? I think yours it needs a more personal analysis. Can you please contact me and let's see? But guys, okay, I'll just help you with information. I don't help clients with debt review. I don't help clients who are already in debt review because by you being under debt review, you're basically saying that um, whatever that has to do with finances, we must talk to your counselor. So I don't help clients with debt review or who are under debt review. I need clients who are not under debt review. But because you're a pensioner, I can help you with information so you can contact me on the link on my bio. The best way to handle your credit is to have a realistic budget and focus only on the basics. Um, I am, that's true. And the best way is to take necessary credit. Don't, if you can wait. Uh, thank you so much, Koketa, for the rose. Thank you so much. Guys, I think one thing that it's affecting us, is, and it's what I was talking about yesterday when I was talking about um, money mindset. A lot of us, we have this issue. We have instant gratification. And we have this thing of what will people say. You get into a new house and then you don't have a couch now you want to you want you want to um 
invite your family you don't want them to see that you don't have a couch you go and take a credit well you can still save up and get a well uh, you and get a, a, a couch cash so i think a lot of us are no longer scared of credit we just go around getting unnecessary credit and a lot of us just because a bank tells you that you afford we just take credit even when we are not supposed to take it so it's a lot that goes in. So number one, you must be realistic. There's certain things that you don't need credit for, you know, unless like a credit card, like I said, you can still still take a 1000 credit card at the bank, use it as a transaction account. Maybe now and then use the 500 rand from that 1000 rand. You're still building your credit profile. A lot of people, they take a lot of debts. And when then I ask them, why do you take a lot of debts? I was trying to build my credit profile. You are building your credit profile by taking bad debts. And you end up affecting the same credit profile that you're trying to build. So let's be mindful. What because you qualify, it does not mean must take it. And again, guys, before because you qualify, it does not mean that uh, you you you. It, it's not going to affect your credit score as well. So just don't don't go around taking unnecessary debt. This year we are saying no to unnecessary debt. What you can save up for, wait for that gratification for three months, go and buy that thing cash. I remember when we moved into this new apartment that we bought for, for almost four years ago. Would we had to wait? I remember when we had to buy our couch. We're using a very small couch. We waited for five months. We saved, we saved, we got a, a, a couch because we told ourselves that we're gonna buy quality stuff when we have our own property or our own home because while you're still renting, you're moving up and down and it does uh, damage your prop your your furniture. So we waited for I remember each and every time there was a time we had to buy a microwave, we had to up to upgrade. We all we, we had all those things, but they were not of high quality and they were small so we had to update each and everything but we waited there was a chance that we could have went there and said give us hundred thousand loan and then we just buy each and everything at once but we waited for each and everything other months we bought this a new tv we updated we updated we updated until our house was fully finished without any credit because we did not have instant gratification we would look even now the certain renovations that i want to do and I look at them, they bother me so much, but I would rather save up and do those renovations other than go and take unnecessary loan because I want to just renovate my shower and my bedroom, which I can still save up for. So guys, let's stop taking unnecessary debts, please. All right, um, list all your debt and make a plan to pay up one with more interest. Yes, I am. That's the one thing that I also do in my debt um coaching plan but remember i am not everybody knows this that's why i created that that before you can go to debt counseling before you can go to debt review before you can even go and get a debt consolidation loan come let me coach you to pay off your debt so what i do i sit down with you we check all your debts we check all the times we check all the interest rate we, i sit down and i create a debt payment plan that debt, debt payment plan we each and every time I will stipulate that this month we are paying off this debt, this month we are paying off this, this debt, this month we are paying off this debt. And definitely you need to sacrifice. If you want to be buying frontals, you can't be buying frontal each and every month. You also need to be disciplined because you have a, a, a goal to reach to finish all your debt before you can go to debt counseling because debt counseling, it's it's a hell to get out of it. It's, not a, it's, it's the last resort you can take. You know, so that's why I created that debt payment plan because I also saw it in the bank that a lot of people is not, uh, it's not that they can't pay their debts. They don't know the priorities. They don't know their priorities and they don't know um, what they need to be doing. A lot of people have money. They're just taking the money, spending it on things that are not helping them financially. But at the end of the day, they're taking out money. There's a book that I was reading. Is it here? Okay, this book. Guys, if you want to know about finances, you must also read books. There's this book. This is a very good book. We, uh, it's called um, the, the Wealth Chef. This author, who's the author? I forgot the author. Um, Anne Wilson. Anne Wilson says something very important. She said, I think she's a she, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she's a she. She said that a lot of us, we, we don't become financially free because we take our income. After income... We go and we buy liabilities. Those liabilities in terms of personal loans that um, you don't go and buy assets with. Those loans that you just go and buy your clothes. Those loans that you just go and pay for a vacation. We're not talking about loans where you go and acquire assets. 
So she says that you take your income, you get liabilities, and then those liabilities, they go out of your income as in a form of expenses. But a person who's financially free, they take their income, they get liabilities. So we still go and get loans. But the difference is what you do with your loan. They go and take their loans. They buy assets. Those assets now generate income instead of that asset taking out money in a form of um, the loans that you have taken that you do not buy any assets. So a lot of us, we have these loans. If I sit down and ask my clients, what did you do with this loan? It's few of them that are going to tell me about a, 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 a rental or I bought this or I bought this, that it's an asset. Most of them, the things that they even bought with those loans, but they're paying them for five years, those things are no more anymore. It's either they went to a vacation, which is not an asset. You can save up for a vacation. They went and um, maybe um, they celebrated a party, for, made a birthday party. It's not an asset. It's taking out money instead of bringing in money. So credit is not bad. If you have read the book, Rich Dad and Poor Dad, he says, I use the bank's money to make me money. He does not go, that guy is a billionaire, but he does not use his own money to go and buy property. He uses the bank's money to go and buy property, rent out the property, get more than, more income, take the same income, go and pay the bank and some, it's going to be his profit. So what are you doing with the credit that you're getting from the bank? If you're still using credit to fund a lifestyle, financial freedom, it's, it's a little bit far from you. Can I drink? something for that because it's sad even when i say it it's sad to think that the people that are, far, are, are um are living a lifestyle based on debt based on debt and each and every month they need to be paying that debt others are indebted right now because they were trying to to create a certain lifestyle because they didn't want to wait and take the the money and go and get assets that are going to help them to have a life, lifestyle Okay, guys, I'm going to be on this live until 6 now. I'm on load cheating until 6. Or maybe before 6. Okay, let me continue because when I say that, I feel so, so, so sad. I settled my account in November, but it still shows on my credit score. Okay, Tasha, it can. The first six months, it can still show. But if you, it's November, it's still early actually because not even three months yet, December, January. So um, wait until maybe March or April if it still shows, take your paid up letter um, and um, either go to FNB, call the loan department or you can send it through to um, the credit bureau email. Do I have to pay a loan that is seven years old? Jordan, if that loan in the past three years, you didn't acknowledge it, you did not... Um, they do not call you, you do not start making payments, then um, it's going to go on prescription. But if in that three years they did call you and you made an arrangement, it cannot go. Um, are the 30-day loan bad for my credit score? Yes, Matthew, I did explain this. I don't know if you were not on the line. I did explain that because a credit score, your credit report takes time to update. Um, it can update after three months or four months. So if you keep on taking those credit loans each and every month, it means... Um, you find out that on your credit report, now you have about three loans. But in actual fact, the two have already been paid up. But because it does not update monthly, it then affects your credit score. Because you look like somebody who, who has a lot of credit. Um, thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Tasha. I can, uh, Tasha, I see you have answered Jordan. Um, are the 30? Okay, okay, let me see. At the 30 day okay why are you even getting the loan if you end getting a loan to increase your income definitely i am that's one thing that i'm asking that why would you take a loan um to go and just fund a lifestyle instead of it you know building a house doing something even if it's a loan and you you want if you're in tenders you can get a loan to go and buy the supplies and then when you get the money back you pay the loan you have income so you did not take um um it's as you do not take money out only so the same money that you took out it brought money into your pocket as well but if it's just for you to go and buy a weave and buy this and buy that guys okay let's be realistic guys no 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 um any loan isn't increasing your income is a bad debt stop getting bad debt 100 percent. i am 100 percent yes lifa definitely that is the thing. Debt counselors are not doing that. That's what I'm saying. This whole debt counseling thing, it's not an entirely bad thing, you know. 
the only thing is that to get out of it is how but um if it was done properly a lot of people should not be in over debted again but the same people go and get over debted again so the debt counselors are not doing it correctly okay oh nice one perfect i do that usually i think mrs was talking about the credit card hi baby girl oh the baby ah <laughs> you know how they are immediately she comes back from school even at the door oh, where's mommy where's mommy she had that also can go here she's back how can i help you don't make sure that you're gonna make you will see when i come <laughs> okay i've been working yes i said anything that is good is 650 upwards so 610 is still average actually 650 is the minimum good they can still decline with the 650 and again guys like i said that credit score is not only the requirement when it comes to applying for credit maybe the the you can also look at affordability but 610 is still low it's, it's possible that they're declining it because of the credit anything less than 650 it's low just joined looks like i missed uh cynthia don't worry um i do okay guys sorry the yesterday's um live i uploaded it and then for some odd reason it's not there on my youtube um i don't know i joined this thing called a live studio here on 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 tiktok i don't incredible tips you are giving to people i uh, thank you so much i am capitech does too matthew i think you're talking about the credit card as well Oh, consolidation. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, somebody just confirmed that Capitec does do um debt consolidation loan. Kindly explain the effect of balloon payment on cars. So, um, Minister, um, so the effect of balloon payment is that by the end of the time, you need to have that money cash. So, if you don't have the 100,000 cash, it means that you need to either ask for um additional loan, which is going to affect you in terms of finishing up the car. So a car that was supposed to pay in six years, you're now paying it in like 10 years or eight years. So the only difference is that that money, you need to be saving up for it in the six years that you're still financing the, the, the car. So most banks, they will definitely refinance you, but not in a form of a vehicle finance, but in a form of a personal loan, which also has a, a huge interest rate. Yo, a huge... Um, now I'm talking investment, a huge, um, yeah, a huge interest rate. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so how soon after paying off can you buy a car? You must wait for three to six months. How much is a good score? Anything above 615. What's the best investment bank between Investec and Alan Gray? Um, with Tumelo. I don't like mentioning companies, name. I don't like mentioning companies and because it's not fair for me to say which one is good well maybe i don't know what how others work and also it's gonna be very bad with me or and i'm gonna be biased because i do work with uh, i've partnered with a uh, an um financial provider that also have good investment portfolios so yeah when it comes to that it's either you meet me first to face or one-on-one -on -one and then we go through the investment portfolios um Siabonga CC, you are being helpful to many of us. Thank you, user 1973. Thank you so much. I was supposed to pay 5.7. I'm now paying 7.4. It's a new house. Pushy, I did not get your question. Or can I ask the bank if I can decrease my installment because it's very hard due to interest rate? Yes, before you can ask them to. Okay, definitely when you fix it, it's going to go higher. Yes, you can. But. I would first try and find out if you were to fix it. You might find that they're just going to increase 500 rand. Okay, but if you're already complaining with the 7.4, that is too high. Definitely when you fix it, it's going to be more than 7.4. But the nice thing is that it's going to help you not to pay more when the interest rate goes up. So you can call them, negotiate and let them know. Um... Ever since I listened to you, I have hope. As in Obesu, you must always have hope. I'm here to give hope. I always tell people that my target market is not the millionaires. My target market is the ordinary people because we need to start there. We cannot only focus on the people that have it right financially. We need to first focus on the people that they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the basic, just basic knowledge. They don't know the difference between saving and investment. We need to start with those people so that when we now reach the millionaires, we also leave them there reaching to be millionaires. So the thing is a lot of people, they focus on the people that already have the knowledge and everything. And we forget our 
I always love it when people go back to their communities and enrich their communities. I think this is what I'm doing. After getting all the knowledge that I have um, from working in the bank and from studying finance and accounting and all those money-related things and also getting to see the behaviors that especially our black community have, coming back and doing this, it's what makes me sleep well at night. And I'm thankful that a lot of people are receiving it the way that my plan was to do it, to say, I'm not here to for the people that have money or people have a lot of money or people that financially are doing well. I'm here for the people that have money but they don't know how to manage that money and that is keeping them away from being financially free. And I'm thankful for that. Thank you for your efforts to teach us I connect. Thank you, MD. The bank offer you credit not because they like you. To them, loan is a product. Yes, I am. And to them, loan is revenue. To them, loan is revenue, guys. You know what they do? They take the money that you're saving, that they're giving you 7% interest, and they go and loan that same money for 28%. So to them, it's revenue. The biggest revenue when it comes to the bank, it's not all those policies that they're currently aiding now. No, it's the loan. And when you see a bank calling you multiple times, you must be proud of yourself because a bank will not go and call somebody who is not doing well financially. It means your credit card is good, your credit score is good. It means that financially, especially if it's the same bank that you're banking at, when they give you those offers on the app, it means that they see that you're handling your finance as well. So instead of you taking that credit, just say, oh my goodness, now I don't have to go and chase after the bank. The bank is the one that is chasing me. We all want to get to that point where the bank is the one that's chasing you. Is the one that is like, you know what, we can offer, we can even negotiate an interest rate. Because they want you. But it's not so, it does not mean that they're supposed to get you. Keep them, keep them, you know, after you. As much as sometimes you go and they decline you. Guys, it's very nice when you decline your loan. You know, it's nice. And you go like, I don't need a loan. It's fine. I can they also decline you when you need a loan and you can't afford. And now you can afford. You don't need their loan. So decline them as well. Have that. And when you do it, do it with confidence and say, no, I don't want your loan. I'm good. I don't want money. I have my own money. I have my own investments. I have my own savings. My assets are making money for me. So I don't need your loan now. But in the event that I have assets that I want to buy, I'll come and get a loan from you. Oh, how nice. If all of us can get to that point. Oh, Oh my goodness. Yeah, Push, I think you were talking about the the process of getting out for out of uh, I think when I looked that side it's a little bit rude. Let me look here. I think you're talking about the process of getting out of um debt review. It's 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 very, very it's it's how. Excellent advice. I, w I wish I knew you earlier. Hey, Naps, it's never too late. If you have made mistakes, contact me. We're gonna fix those mistakes. It's never too late. They say better late than never. Are the 30 day loan bad for my credit card? Okay, Matthew. Matthew really needed to know. Matthew, stay away from those 30 day credit score. Your credit credit. Those payday loans, stay away from them. Uh, Minister of Joy, yes, it's a very good book. It's a very good book. Though it has to be updated because I believe a lot of things are a little bit outdated. Now things are working in technology wise, but the basics are still there. The nice thing about finance is that the basics basics are the ones that um lay the foundation. Uh, very bad. They mess up your credit. Uh, thank you, Lizo. Thank you for everybody that is giving me um gifts. Thank you so much. Um, and again, I think throughout the year, I will definitely have. I joined. I'm I'm learning this TikTok thing now, guys. I just joined TikTok in July last year. I started this page last year in July. So I saw there is a membership thingy. There's a membership thing on the live. So there will be times that I will only be doing lives for my members, you know, for people that are my members. Um, I think subscription. Yeah, it's up there. I think there is a place on your side. Let me see here uh, where you can subscribe. I don't know where. Okay, I'm still learning this. But where, when I start knowing, they're going to be some certain content, premium content, where it's only going to be for my subscribers.